This video is presented by NewMetalWorker.com. If you work with metal long enough, sooner or later you're going to have to deal with damaged threads. Because thread repair is a problem in the industrial world, there's some pretty good off-the-shelf solutions for this problem. First, we'll look at fixing an outside thread, like on a bolt. Damaged threads like this may not look bad, but they can stop a nut in its tracks. And if you try fixing this by just running a nut down over it, it can start galling on the threads and really make things worse. A much better way is to run the right size die over those threads and clean up the expanded parts. One of the more common die related questions is which side of the die starts out on the bolt. Notice how the cutting teeth on this die taper back to nothing. This is the bottom part of the die that goes over the bolt to begin the cuts. We just set that opening over the bolt, hold everything level, and start turning it slowly to let it engage the threads. There's several good threads above the damaged ones that'll let us get this die aligned and started properly. The die will start to show some resistance when it encounters the damaged threads. At that point, you want to start turning the die forward about half to three quarters of a turn, then back it up about a half a turn to break the chips, and keep repeating that cycle. Even though this is light cutting, I still add a little bit of oil just to make sure everything goes smoothly. Then after we've cut through the damaged threads, I'll go ahead and run the die up and down the bolt a couple of times just to make sure it's cleaned everything up well. After cleaning it up with the die, we can still see some very small flat spots on the ends of the threads. As small as those flat spots are, they're not going to cause us any problems, and you can see that the bolt threads right into the hole with just my fingers. If this bolt is going to get a lot of stress, I would still get a new bolt and install that as soon as I could, but this will work for now. When we strip the threads out of the inside of a hole, things can get a little more complicated. Sometimes you can just drill the stripped hole out and thread it for a larger fastener. But that's not always possible. A lot of times the piece that the bolt goes through that is holding on can't handle a larger fastener. We also have to be careful of what's around the hole that we're working with. If this was a whole cylinder head on a real racing engine, this would be a real big problem. For many thread repairs, Healy coils are worth their weight in gold. These little inserts let you drill out the bad threads, screw these in, and come up with the same threads that are in there before we stripped them out. And you make these inserts in all of the metric and standard inch thread designs and sizes. These single thread kits come with several inserts, an installation tool, and the tap you need for screwing this insert in. Everything in these Healy coil kits is very well made from the taps to the insertion tool, but these little coils is where the real genius is with this system. The coils are made from tightly wound diamond shaped wire. This tang on the end is engaged by the insertion tool and actually turns the insert in. And you can see the little notch next to the tang in the wire, and that's for snapping this tang off after it's installed. We'll see more on that a little later in this video. They even ground the end of the insertion tool square so you can put it in a tap handle. You have to use a specific size drill with each of the thread sizes in these kits, and that's listed on the package, and it's also printed right on the tap. For our 3816 threads, we need to use a 2564 drill bit, and I have that here. We're actually taking out very little material, and I know some guys can do this with a hand drill, but that isn't me. I have no problem recognizing that my drill press is way more accurate than I am. After clearing the hole to make sure there's no debris in that, I can use the included tap to start cutting the threads. These tasks may be cutting special threads for these inserts, but you use them like anything else. Go a half to a three quarter of a turn forward, and then back it up a half a turn or so to break the chips, and keep repeating that cycle. And as we did with the bolt, once we cut all the threads, I go ahead and spin this tap down and up a couple of times just to make sure we clean everything up real well. When we screw the insert onto the insertion tool, this cut engages the tang in the bottom of the insert. As the insertion tool pushes on that tang, it actually reduces the diameter of the coil a little bit and makes it go in very easily. We start feeding the insert into the threads in a hole just like you would a bolt. And we just carefully turn the insert until it sinks down into the hole. We want to turn the insert in until its top edge is below the top of the hole just a little bit. When we back the insertion tool out, that releases the pressure on the insert and expands a little bit and fits into the threads very tightly. 
And now we have brand new 3 8 by 16 threads. Remember that little notch next to the tang? Well, that's how we get rid of the tang if we have a through bolt or we need to stack the inserts for a long threaded hole. I just set a good size hex key down a hole, set it on the tang, wrap it with the hammer, and it's gone. After knocking off that tang, we can thread one bolt through one insert or stack inserts in a deep hole to really grab a long bolt. Knowing how to safely repair threads can save you a lot of money and a lot of time and a lot of frustration.